Welcome to the second segment in the metadata analysis of the Digital Forensics series. In this segment, we will analyze Office documents for metadata. Metadata is a set of data that describes and provides information about other data. Simply, it's data about data. Um, some of the things that we as forensic analyzers look out for are creation and modified timestamps, specific users that had access to a modified document, close to what's contained within the document. These are just a few examples. I highly recommend you watch my first video on metadata analysis on images using EXIF tool. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. In this segment, however, I want to show you how to analyze Office files which have been retrieved for forensic analysis. So our hypothetical scenario is that we've been given a few files that our department is wanting more information about. These files happen to be volatile, meaning that if we try to access them using the associated application, we could append new user information to the metadata of the forensic evidence. So we have to somehow access metadata about these office files without altering any information. Now, some applications have created a defense against this. For example, now Microsoft Office has a viewing only mode so that no metadata is appended to the file attributes unless you click on the edit document, whereas other documents haven't. So we have to take precautions and perform this type of analysis irrespective of the file being associated with MS Office or not due to this reason. Most people see Office files as Word, PowerPoint and Excel files. But in our case, if we change our window setting to show file name extensions, we can see their respective extensions, .doc, is in my case dot docx is the word uh, processing file dot pbtx is the powerpoint presentation file dot xlsx is the excel spreadsheet file these are actually containers of xml based file formats developed by microsoft for representing spreadsheets charts presentations and word processing documents and office documents can now be associated with the word processor presentation or spreadsheet application based on these file extensions so that way for the end user it's simple for using and accessing and editing i'm only going to be focusing on these three formats for now but it's the same process in terms of analysis irrespective of all office documents or other office applications such as open office or LibreOffice. so i'm going to perform the normal forensic um, steps i'm going to copy the original files paste them so that way i'm not altering the originals and so by renaming each of these files with the dot zip extension I'll just quickly rename everything so by renaming the documents to a dot zip extension and extracting the files using any extraction um, application we can then analyze the contents of these files for metadata. Navigate to the docprops folder and then open the AppXML and the CoreXML with a, any internet browser as these handle uh, XML based files very well. And you should be able to see the metadata of this document. Now, this method is only for Microsoft Office documents, whereas the docprops folder may not be present in other Office um, applications, but you will find other files which are similar for metadata extraction. From here, we can extract the required metadata and also look for clues of what's contained within the document. So, I've made a small um, list of what all I'm going to extract. So I'm going to extract all this information about each of the files. So the application is Microsoft Macintosh PowerPoint. It's a presentation file. It says on screen show four by three contents. It is two paragraph, one slide. One slide. Um, um, title is Nifty Presentation. The author is Nancy. Last modified by Jim. 
not Nancy. Revision number is nine. Created and last modified date and time. And sometimes the doc props folder could contain a thumbnail of the pre or previewing what's inside the file. And this one says nifty presentation. And there's a word at the bottom so that we can put down again into the contents. Two paragraphs. So that's the analysis of the first file. So we'll quickly perform the same particular analysis for the second file. So doc props folder again, and this one does have a, another thumbnail present, so we'll access that as well. So the application is Microsoft Macintosh Excel. The type is a worksheet. We have no idea of the contents as of yet. Um, no. No information. And it says sheet one, so I'm presuming one sheet. The title is not present. The author is Catherine. And the last modified by is that person, Kaiser. Revision number is 12. The creation date time, the modified date time. And I want to see if the preview contains any information about the contents. And it does. There's about four, five, six, seven, seven cells present. So we can rule that out. We can say seven cells present with the information. Cool. And that's the second file extracted. And if we take a look at the third file now, oh, the third file doesn't have a preview. So we're on the third file now. So this is Microsoft Macintosh Word. It's a Word document. The contents of this is saying one page, 102 words, 582 characters. So one page, 102 words, 582 characters. One. The title is internal title. Now this could be a system generated title. I won't know, but I will still take the information down. It was created by Charles, last modified by Michael. Revision numbers three. The creation date and time and the last modified date and time. Cool, and that's all three files analyzed. Um, I hope you understood the segment. The idea of the anal of this kind of analysis is so that we don't alter the forensic evidence and validate that we had not accessed this file by normal means. Um, that's simply opening the document with the associated application and analyzing it. The reason for this is there could be sabotage intentions when simply opening and analyzing the contents by normal means. It, in court, they could ask you things such as, well, how do we know that you simply hadn't opened the document and edited them yourself? And similar questions such as these. And as now you can comfortably state that Microsoft used XML files based file formats to store word processes, presentations, and spreadsheets who now have associated applications which help them with the editing and the expansion of their software to the end user. This way we had no access to the file had not opened the file, thus not appended any metadata of our own. Validation, again, is very important.
So I hope you enjoyed this metadata analysis segment. I'll leave links in the description of my first segment of the metadata analysis of images using EXIF tool. And I'll also leave a link to the files used in the segment so that you can perform the analysis yourself or simply create documents of your own and cross-reference the metadata for accuracy.